Today, we're going to be discussing torque steer. Now, torque steer is a vehicle dynamics problem that affects largely front-wheel drive cars, but also all-wheel drive, and to a much lesser extent, rear-wheel drive cars. Now, torque steer is explained in a lot of different ways, so I'm going to try and separate fact from fiction in terms of torque steer explanations, as well as give you an overview of what torque steer is, what causes it, and how we fix it. Torque steer is basically when you're applying some sort of throttle input, and it results in a change of the dynamics of the car. So this usually means that it will pull to the left or the right as a result of throttle. It shouldn't be confused with steering kickback, which is a symptom of torque steer, but can not occur while torque steer is still occurring. So you can still have your car veering without your steering kicking back. Minor point though. Now many front wheel drive cars are famous for torque steer. The Mazda 3 MPS comes to mind. And the explanation that's normally given for torque steer is that it's due to unequal length drive shafts on the front axle of a front wheel drive car. These unequal length drive shafts often occur as a result of packaging dilemmas. When you have an engine in the car bay, it has to have its gearbox off to one side. So usually they'll put the differential on there as well. So the engine will be running this way, gearbox and differential will be on this side. As a result, the differential outputs will be on one side of the car. You'll end up with different drive shaft lengths to get to each front wheel. This isn't so much of a problem when you have your drive shaft running on the length of your car and have a differential in the center as on a rear wheel drive or all wheel drive car. Now, why would unequal length drive shafts cause the car to veer to the side under throttle? Well, there's quite a lot of explanations given for this and this is where I really wanna get into some detail. One of the more common explanations I see is that the different length in the two shafts causes a differential flex and because of the flex, you get different power transfer to both wheels and this results in one wheel, the shorter side, kicking first and going around. Now, the problem with that is, is that that's only a transient phenomenon, okay? Once the flex has been picked up in both sides of the axles and they're both at sync, your torque will even out. So your wheel will kick sideways and then it will just come back. Your car will also not continuously veer to the side. Now, this means that steady state torque steer, which is one of the things that I've felt the most when driving front wheel drive cars, isn't explained by this phenomena because once you're in a steady state, it shouldn't be doing anything. Now, fortunately, Ford has published a white paper on this that agrees with me that doesn't list this as a cause of torque steer. However, that's not to say that non-symmetric axles are not a cause of torque steer. Now, the cause that is a result of that is differential angles in your CVs. Now, if we look from the top of the car, we can not really see any difference in angle. But if we imagine that this engine could be forward, you'd get a different angle between here and here. You need a much more severe angle there. Or if we look from the front of the car and we imagine that our gearbox is here and then we have one going down, another going down over a longer length, we can see that these angles are gonna be different with this one being shallower. So we have less angle on this side than on that side. Now, what is this gonna mean? Well, it means that your torque transfer is gonna be different through your CV joints or your universal joints. When CVs are not aligned, you will end up with A, a degree of torque that's going to come in the pivot axis of your steering. So it's going to try and turn your wheels because it's going to try and align them to a more preferable torque vector. And B, you also change your efficiency of how much torque is getting transmitted down the line. If you have less torque being transmitted on one side than the other, you'll end up with more tractive force on one side or the other. So a larger force on this side than this side, say, as a result of angles. Could vary depending on what the angles are. Now, if your force is larger on this side than this side, what's gonna happen? Well, assuming that your car has some degree of scrub radius, and watch my video on scrub radius for what that is, this force is gonna be offset from the center of your steering axis. Now, this means that if this force is larger than this force, even though your scrub radius forces would normally cancel out, you'll end up with the car pulling to one side because this will create a torque this way that is bigger than the torque that this will create this way. So it will end up twisting your steering that way and you'll steer off to the side. Also on a larger car scale, you can see that this force is more than this force on this side and will rotate the entire car that way. And that's how even if we had a steering system that wasn't kicking back, we can see that this traction would cause the tires to pull the car that way. And this is another way in which torque steer can occur, which is if this road surface has more traction than this road surface and you have an open differential in the center or any type of differential that's going to vector your torque to your wheel with more grip, you're gonna end up with a difference in traction between the two wheels and the car will rotate. Now, this is the case that is also prevalent on rear wheel drive cars. And it's an example of where you can have torque steer without actually having 
a kickback at the steering wheel. Now another factor that's going to vary your torque steer is misalignment in this entire system. So if you've got the engine out of place by a little bit or you have your components with a little bit of wear so that as you're accelerating your engine is flexing like your engine mounts or your suspension or something like that is flexing, then you can end up with the angles being unequal side to side, even a suspension that was designed with equal angles. And this will mean that you will end up with a torque steer as a result. Now to give you an example, if we tilted the engine this way, let's say our drive shafts went from there and there, you imagine if we tilt the engine that way, that this is now at a better angle than there, that will be at a worse angle. And this will cause a torque inequality between the two, it will cause more power here, you'll end up with a torque steer. Also on the subject of angle, you can see that while we're in the middle of the corner, your car's going to have some degree of Ackerman on it. Check my video on Ackerman steering for that. And you'll end up seeing that if this angle is greater than this angle, you're going to have better torque transfer to here, this is going to be getting more force at it, you're going to end up with a torque steer this time into the corner. So just the dynamics of the vehicle, all these angles are constantly changing. Even in bump, these angles are changing. So that is what's going to cause different torque steer scenarios depending on the situation and makes it really hard to avoid torque steer, especially in a front wheel drive car. By the same token as that Ackman concept, if you're in mid corner and you have a limited slip differential on your front wheel drive car, imagine that we're cornering this way and our weight is transferred to this side. This tire is going to have more grip than this one. So we end up with this big thrust force and this little one if we step on the gas. And that's going to end up with exactly the same scenario occurring again. So you can see there's lots of different ways to get torque steer, particularly in a front wheel drive car. And these same rules apply to all wheel drive cars if we're talking about the front wheels. And this is why there's difficulties involved with this. So how do we cancel out torque steer? Well, to start with that transient torque steer I was talking about at the start of the video, the easiest way to do that is to match the stiffness from left to right. Just because this shaft is longer doesn't mean it has to be less stiff. If we increase the material here by using a tubular section and then we use something of a smaller diameter solid on this side, we can end up with more polar moment of inertia and thus have a good stiffness over the length. So if we match the stiffness, there won't be a difference in flex. We won't end up with that transient torque steer when the throttle is changed. In order to counter the angle issue, what we can do there is we can run this shaft along here to here as a solid shaft. So uh, Ford Fiesta runs this sort of setup. Well, the older one that I've worked on anyway, it runs a solid shaft from here to here. And then the CV joint is there. So this length here is the same as this length here. And that way the angles will be equal under all circumstances. So we've now removed the angle problem. And if we match up our flex ride, we've removed the flex issue. Although it's going to be hard to get the flex to match perfectly with such a massive length difference. So what do we do then after we've done those? Well, reduce your scrub radius. If the scrub radius is smaller, you're going to have less sort of steering kickback as a result of these thrust forces. It's not going to change the overall car, your moment much, but it will reduce the driver felt steering. After that, we can calibrate our electric power steering, if we have an electric power steering on a modern car, to try and cancel out these forces. So we can map sort of throttle maps to where it's going to be. It's kind of a dodgy way of doing it, but more and more front wheel drive cars are kind of doing that where it basically counter steers for you. Finally, you can use an electronic differential in the center to monitor the torque levels between the two wheels and apply braking or torque vector as necessary to basically get the thrust forces you want at the point you want. And you can use the computers to control this. And that's, again, a patch that's coming more and more in more modern cars. And that's what an e-diff is doing to control torque steer in a car. Finally, that's still not working you can then go and stiffen up all your suspension bushings and everything to minimize compliance. And the less compliance you have, the less angle change you're going to have. If you can have a scrub radius close to zero or negative, that would be really good for this sort of application. Ford's Revo Knuckle that they now use, and I believe the Focus RS, is a system that basically uses a McPherson strut, but then mounts the spindle outboard. And doing that enables you to get a really low scrub radius. And stuff like that will help reduce torque steer. Just as a final note, as far as rear wheel drive cars go, there's a few mid engine cars that run um, transverse engine setups, which end up with differential drive shaft axles. Fiat X19 comes to mind. And this can end up with the same sort of torque steer conditions at the front occurring at the rear. 
So you end up with a yaw moment on the car due to a differential on the rear wheel's thrust force under acceleration, and this will end up with some degree of torque steer in a car that isn't front wheel drive. You will also note that symmetric all wheel drive that Subaru claims solves a lot of these issues still doesn't solve the scrub radius issue and that will cause you to still get torque steer while you're in a corner and if you've got a difference in traction between the two wheels that will also cause torque steer especially if you have a limited slip diff at the front that is vectoring the majority of your torque to your outside wheel with more grip. The main thing is though to try and reduce torque steer as much as possible and modern designs are really good at that and most good front wheel drive and all wheel drive cars now really have torque steer nailed down. That's torque steer explained. Uh, thanks for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and check out my other videos and hopefully see you next time.